Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. The Emergency Operations Center gives an update on Typhoon Buloy and where it's heading. Also tonight, shelters are clearing out as PSS prepares to start back classes tomorrow. And direct flights to and from Japan could be seeing an increase. We have the details. In sports, girls high school volleyball salutes the Lady Eagles. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Forty-eight hours. That's all we get in a week. But those forty-eight hours? We try to make them last forever. How? By filling in fast with all the right stuff. With a lot of laughter. A little drama. Some adventure. And a whole lot of love. Dad, Mom's here. It happens pretty quick. Bye, Dad. But it's cool. Because the rest of the week, we talk about our plans. You want to go to the beach? On how to make the next 48 hours last us a lifetime. Bubblegum Shrimp Company opens daily at 11 a.m. Located on Beach Road in the heart of Garapan. Hoffa Day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Tuesday, October 22, 2019. The all-clear has been given from the CNMI Joint Information Center for the islands of Saipan and Tinian. Typhoon Boiloi is continuing to move north-northwest of Saipan at a Category 2 typhoon and is expected to intensify over the next few days before peaking to a Category 4 west of the Marianas. Government offices along with PSS and NMC will reopen tomorrow. Airports on Saipan, Tinian and Rota remain open with delayed flight times. As of 11 a.m. this morning, we have declared the islands of Tinian and Saipan all clear. Uh, we are still maintaining uh, tropical storm condition too for the islands of Alamog and Pog and, and uh, Aguiquen. And speaking on effects from the typhoon, Boiloi was a bit easier to handle than most that passed by, as the island was able to sustain power throughout the night. KSPN sits, sits down with the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation Executive Director, Gary Camacho, for the details. Two typhoons in one month, only two weeks apart. But Typhoon Boiloi spared the Sinemai as no one lost power throughout the storm. We did not have any circuit. Power outages or feeder outages is referred to. Um, in our nine um, feeders, I think they all were, were able to stay up. Um, we were prepared to do reclosures on them from the power plant. Um, and of course, as mentioned uh, yesterday, in the event that there, there was going to be a, a power interruption in one of the circuits, then we were just going to keep it off. Obviously, we were going to dispatch field personnel at night uh, in, in the conditions, um, and we were going to wait till this morning. But uh, like I said, it, it, it held, and it held very well. Um, this, of course, is because of a lot of uh, uh, resiliency that's been put in. Water, on the other hand, is a separate situation. Where Camacho says throughout the island, water was shut off for the duration of the typhoon passage to preserve the tanks. In doing so, the, the, the purpose was empty tanks are, are in, in, in strong winds become very uh, 
they become vulnerable. And a lot of these tanks are new, and um, with the strong winds, the, the, you know, it, it, uh, it, it's, it, it, it tends to vibrate, from my understanding. Um, so what we do is, 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 uh, is make sure the tanks are full. So with the, with the strength, and it, it, uh, it protects the, the, uh, the tanks itself. Um, and of course, that, that's, that's critical because that's a long-term repair in the event that they're damaged in that way. Camacho says another reason the water is turned off during the Typhoon Passage is to provide water the following day to customers. A lot of the tank service areas were turned on this morning, um, early this morning, which was Asthma Twist, Capitol Hill, Ag Ag Rabagao, um, Gualarai, Cagman, Puerto Rico, uh, and then um, I think around 9 o'clock, Calhoun and Astralahi, and, uh, and then most recently over the last hour, we, we opened up the Canatabla, the Dan Dan, the Papago, the San Vicente, and the Isley, which completed all the tanks uh, being open and water now filling up the pressure. But CUC is advising customers if tap water is to be used as drinking water to boil it before consuming, as contamination by coliform bacteria is uncertain at this time due to the typhoon. Because we're not able to take samples um, until tomorrow when, when, when the when the the weather becomes a little better for our lab, um, with Heidi Yellen overseeing our lab program, and um, and she's requesting that she can or informing us that she can do that tomorrow. So so again, we'll know tomorrow whether we can cancel the precautionary precautionary boil of water notice that 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 people will see here um, very uh, very quickly. But um, again, these are all the the things that take time to do. Um, before we can just open and provide water. So we, we, we truly um, appreciate the, uh, the patience from the community and the understanding community as we're trying to ensure that we, we provide not only water supply, but, but good water supply to, the, to, to everyone. And Camacho does ask if you are going to a shelter or will not be home during the occurrence of a typhoon to turn off the main water valve to your house to preserve water. So then... Um, if they're not home and we turn on the water, um, then at least the, the, and if there's any damage to their side of the water system on their property, then it just doesn't drain out and deplete our water supply. Um, so it's very important that we do that um, and try to, try to you know, understand and, and be responsible with the, with the limited water supply the following a, a disaster. If you are experiencing any loss of power or water resulting from the storm, contact the CUC Customer Call Center at 664-4282. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ash McDowell. And with the all clear given earlier today, shelterees were moved so that teachers and staff may prepare for classes tomorrow. Families started making their way out of shelters as soon as the all clear was declared by Acting Governor Arnold Palacios. So far we had about uh, 273 shelterees, 56 families, 7 shelterees and 2 families. This is as of um, our last update at 9 a.m. on the shelter count. Um, three of those shelters were at full capacity. That was Cob Cobleville Elementary School, Marianas High School, and Child Canoa Head Start. Um, earlier this morning we had teams that were deployed to assist um, families move back into their primary homes. Um, for those that were that um, are living in tents still, we had a special accommodation for them that they would be that they would be accommodated at, um, at the aging office as a holdover, while um, teams from the Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services, the Mayor's office, um, and the Department of Corrections were erecting tents here um, all over the South Side so that they can get back into their homes later this afternoon. Eight shelters opened their doors during Typhoon Boaloi. The shelters were at Cagman High School, Coblerville Elementary School, Marianas High School, Dandan Dan Head Start, The Aging Office, Chalincanoa Head Start, Tanapak Middle School, and San Vicente Elementary School. PIO Kevin Bautista says Tinian Elementary School was occupied by two families while the Tinian Aging Center was used as a standby basis. This is Ali Lemis for KSPN News. It's been 18 months without direct service to and from Japan, arrivals which have been plummeting for years should see a welcome increase with the launch of direct service on Skymark Airlines. Our Chris Nelson sits down with an industry leader to talk tourism. Pacific Micronesia Tours, or PMT, is the ground handler for the Japan Travel Bureau in Saipan and Guam. 
And sister company, Tossie Tours, handles the transportation end of things. They have a fleet of buses, vans, cars, and boats. The company is one of the first tourism companies on Saipan, and they have managed Monagaha Island for the past 30 years. Without direct flights from Japan, for the past year and a half, business has been challenging, and the company is looking forward to the new daily service from Skymark. For President Masato Tezuka, the new Skymark flight is a good start, but he says we have a lot of work to do in the coming months and years. Of course, uh, it's a very good news for us to have a legal flight from Japan. Uh, but uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, we have to think about uh, uh, high competition in the destination, in the tourism from Japan. So we, I think Shinomai, Saipan, need to be changed to attract more Japanese customers to come here. Tezuka has worked for JTB for 36 years. He's worked in London, Hawaii, and Saipan, as well as Japan, and has spent time in marketing strategy, system development, and operations. He says the historical way of doing business and the reliance on the great weather and short flight time in Saipan is no longer enough, something all of us saw recently when Delta had the market to themselves and decided to stop flying. Just 15 years ago, 40,000 Japanese tourists a month visited Saipan, a number that is now in the hundreds. Instead of carrying on the, our service or business way uh, from the past, we need to create the new attractions or attractive points. And uh, also, uh, I think most important thing is uh, to have a uh, branding strategy. Because there are many, many resort islands over the, all over the world. So although we have a cross distance from Japan uh, to Saipan, but we, I think we, we need to analyze our uh, strong point and weak point. Strong points include the natural beauty and friendliness. Strong point is uh, uh, we have very beautiful oceans, uh, uh, high transparency, clear uh, waters, and also uh, in, compar in comparison with warm, uh, we have uh, more greenness, uh, flowerness. So uh, the people coming from Japan appreciate that. Mm. What are the weak points? What are the things? We yeah, can like uh, I think uh, if I can raise uh, one of the example that uh, this uh, island developed uh, from 1970s uh, under the Japanese, how to say, uh, tourism industry. But uh, way of the development so far was uh, uh, something like that, how do I say, uh, not under the total harmony uh, master plans. So every investment was created. So. Uh, if you go to the island like uh, Greece or uh, European islands, so island is small, but uh, it's always uh, had a harmony of a beautiness of the uh, design or color or something like that. So uh, this is including the uh, design of the house or uh, everything. So Saipan Island is uh, not a so big island. So if we have a good uh, say brand strategies, and the brand strategy is very important because uh, how we can promote the Saipan as a brand. So my point of view is that uh, we have beautiful natures and oceans. So attachment, uh, engagement with a beautiful nature is a key point and all relaxation, something like that. So if we think that is uh, some sort of image of the Saipan island itself, uh, maybe color, or design, or restaurant, shop, hotel, everything uh, is better to be, have some sort of harmony with a total design concept. Coming up, Typhoon is gone and tents go back up. We speak with the guys who make this happen, up next on KSPN. Get the phone plan you're looking for at IT&E. Stay connected with the strongest, widest, and most reliable network in the Marianas. Stream, share, play, shop, and surf the web with super fast 4G LTE data. Whether you need just a few gigabytes of data to get by, or if you want to go further with unlimited data, there's a plan for you. You'll always get the best price. Visit any IT&E store or call us to learn more. IT&E. Explore your world. Watch the Visitor's Channel online, on time, anytime at SaipanTV.com. 
where to go, what to see, what to do. Restaurants, spas, activities, and culture, it's all in one place, in high definition, on your mobile device. SaipanTV.com. Check it out. Jose and Pedro were born on the very same day. Jose liked to play sports. Pedro liked to play video games. Jose's favorite word was pass, pass me the ball. Pedro's favorite word was pass too, pass me the rice. Jose is retired and has both time and energy. His life is just beginning. Pedro has diabetes, hypertension, and gout. His life could soon end. Eat less, play more, live longer. Brought to you by PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. As soon as they receive word that they are needed out in the field, these men and women do not hesitate to get up, get out, and get work done. Sally Lemus reports. The CNMI is certainly grateful for being spared by Typhoon Bualoy, but we should also remember to thank our fellow first responders who work extra hard to help those in need. Early this morning, the Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services were out and about putting tents back up. So currently what's happening right now is uh, the Tetris uh, team is putting back up a tent we put on yesterday. Um, as you can see, we have guys from each shift, uh, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and also the Delta team. We have a total of, I believe, 15 guys actually working on tents right now. Yesterday we put a total of down, I believe, 43 tents. And now today, since we got the all clear from uh, the Lieutenant Governor and the Governor, we're gonna start putting all tents back up that we put down yesterday. So there's a total of uh, four teams right now, and then we're gonna split up two and two in the afternoon. Residents who needed help getting their tents down before the typhoon called the Emergency Operations Center and workers from the mayor's office, Department of Corrections, and DFEMS immediately reported to assist the residents. This woman actually gave um, one of our co-workers a phone call, and uh, once we got the location, we came here and started taking everything down. So uh, right now, it's usually we're going off a list that we had yesterday. But if we do see any other tents that are down, and if, if someone's asking, hey, can you put it up? I'm actually staying here. We'll help the, put the tent back up. KSPN was able to speak with another fireman who worked all night, alert and ready to assist. So what time did you guys work this morning? Started at 6.30 mm -hmm. and ends whenever they call it. So what about last night? Were you working last night? Yes. So, um, From 11 to 5 this morning. Wow. So basically you were out the whole night, you were away from your family. And yeah. Yeah, so is that, I mean, how does it feel, you know? It's part of the job. Home. Not for the money, it's for the job. This is Sally Lemis for KSPN News. On Guam, passengers checked out the island as a cruise ship made a stop. KUAM reports. Here's your Guam News headline. A perfect day for a cruise ship to stop by. Here's more. GVB President Laguanya says the Bureau pulled out all the stops in welcoming the passengers who spent less than a full day here sightseeing and shopping. Many of them left with uh, knowing that the people of Guam has a very warm hospitality, friendly people as they tell us, and they thought the island was so beautiful. So we hope that they will spread the word to all of their friends and families about their impressions to Guam as they move on to their next destination. Cruise ships, especially of this size, don't stop here that regularly. But Governor Leon Guerrero has assembled a task force that includes GVB, Gita, and the port to recommend ways to further develop a local cruise industry. Laguanya says globally, it's a huge business. It has a lot of opportunity for growth, and I believe uh, from the shoreline director that I spoke to yesterday that total cruise rooms um, on ships uh, are less than 1% of the total hotel inventory around the world. So there's a vast opportunity there for us to cultivate it. She says while the passengers on the Carnival Splendor boarded in the U.S. West Coast and sailed here from Hawaii, there are more countries in the Asia Pacific region that are investing in new ships. Such as Singapore, uh, China, um, Japan has a very vibrant cruise uh, industry. So these are areas that we need to look more closer to and, and develop new opportunities for our, our island. And Laguanya says she couldn't have wished for a better send-off for the passengers. It was a gorgeous Guam sunset as they sailed to their next stop in Singapore. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Laconto. And also former Democrat Party of Chair, Democrat Party of Guam Chairperson Ken Perez has died according to a news release from the speaker. They were informed that he had passed away. He spent a lifetime of public service holding multiple positions in GovGuam, including the Port Authority, GPA, and the legislature. He also worked for Madeleine Berdalio when she was Washington delegate. 
He also served as a board member for the Historic Preservation and Review Board and the GEC. For more, check out KUAM.com. All right, coming up in the KSPN2 Sports Report, if one is good and two is great, what's three? Maybe we should ask the Saipan soccer player. Maybe he knows. Faster, easier to use. With live TV, recordings, video on demand, and streaming apps, all in a single place. When you're looking for something new, Recommendations are tailored to you. Voice-powered, personalized results to find what you want faster. And the unlimited potential of smart home. The new experience from TiVo is here. Hi, I'm Thelma, a certified ophthalmic assistant here at Marianas Eye Institute. One of the most common eye problems is dry eyes, but the symptoms can sometimes be confusing. So frequently people will come to me and tell me that their eyes are watering all the time and I'll tell them, oh, you've got dry eye. And they'll say, how can it be dry when they're watering all the time? Your job is usually a very good predictor of how much aggravation this will cause you. If you're staring at a computer screen, if you're doing a lot of reading, your blink rate slows down and now because your eyes are open more often, they dry out quicker and the problem then gets aggravated. If you're under a ceiling fan or air conditioning, that also will aggravate the underlying problem in which the eye would then start to water. So you can actually have a wet, dry eye. The treatment, lubrication. This has been Dr. Dennis Williams of the Mariana Science Institute. Sports fans. Buenos sports fans, as sure as this is typhoon season, the Grace Christian Academy Eagles were in the girls' high school volleyball championships again. Nine teams walked into the MHS gym Saturday for a one-day double elimination tournament. The Mount Carmel Knights take a point off of MHS 2 in this elimination game in the morning. The Dolphins surprise MCS with that shot and the victory to knock them right out of the tournament. Meanwhile, over on the adjacent court, MHS won, showing their power against Saipan Southern High. But neither of those teams were able to make it to the finals. Meanwhile, the GCA Eagles, they were in the winner's bracket, goofing off outside. MHS 2 made it to the semis where they succumbed to the SIS Geckos. Third place, a good finish for these underdogs. Championship game, the Eagles. In the near court, facing SIS, who needed to beat them twice, but they needed to beat them once first, and nobody did that all season. <laughs> Give it an assist to the net for that eagle point as they jump on top and feel the joy. <laughs> Catriel Soros goes over the top for another point for the Navy Hill students. Mari Sung, the deep hit for the Aslito students. They'll seek to Saris for the set and the kill, and it was 17 9 in favor of the Eagles. <laughs> These people are probably too young to know what a Kodak moment is, but there's one. A little trickleation sends two geckos to the floor. GCA goes up 19 12. The Geckos, unable to deliver hard spikes, that allowed the Eagles' steady defense to control this game. 
However, GCA's unforced errors allowed the Geckos to keep it close, and that made it 21-16. Championship point, both teams playing it safe. Uh, volley that lasted a minute and six seconds ends with a flub. SIS not out yet. SIS came up with four consecutive points to make it 24-20. Play it again, Samantha. Championship point. Catriel goes deep. GCA Eagles repeat as high school girls volleyball champions. All right, congratulations to the Lady Eagles. Winning three consecutive UFC Fights of the Night awards was a major accomplishment for Frank the Crank Camacho. We have a new three-peater. For the third week in a row, Sun June Tenorio was selected as Rookie of the Week in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. The Suffolk University freshman scored two more goals last week, including a game winner, his fifth game winner of the year. The Saipan grads got 10 goals this year, half of the team's total. He's tied for fourth best in this conference. And first time a Suffolk uh, Ram has a three-peat as Rookie of the Week. So congratulations for Sunju. All right, we're going to come up with the uh, data from that typhoon that just missed us right after this. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! So what are you going to do this year? At Gold's, a dedicated fitness studio with a cushioned floor is perfect for group exercise. The cardio room features a variety of treadmills, bikes, steppers, and ellipticals. Fitness machines will help you achieve your goals, and the largest free weight area on Saipan gives you comfortable space to work out. Gold's gym team is ready to help you get to your goals. Try harder. We know you can do it. Traveling or laying over on Guam? Don't wait around. Zip into Guam Adventures at Zipline Park inside the Hilton Resort and Spa. Guides will take you through a series of zips, starting with the mountain course and then zip over the ocean with spectacular views of Tumon Bay. Six zip lines and all deliver a thrilling experience and it's family friendly, so bring the kids ages six and up. You'll love the security of double lines and a new braking system to make riding smoother. The towers are named after the islands in the Marianas. We call it the Island Hopper. Your guides will teach you what you need to know to soar through the jungle with a bird's eye view. Best of all, for residents of Saipan, Kenyon, and Rota, you can book this experience at 20% savings. Log on to GuamAdventures.com and during checkout, use offer code HAFA20. Book it and zip it today. We'll even pick you up. All right, for the record, the highest wind gust recorded at the airport from the storm, it was 41 miles an hour, and that was Monday at 9 o'clock in the morning from a feeder van. The highest that they had at the airport Tuesday, 39 miles an hour. Rainfall from the typhoon at Capitol Hill, 4.15 inches. Rainfall after midnight at the airport is 2 inches and still counting because it's still raining. The high, 81 today, it was 72, the low at my house. Humidity up there at 94%, of course. Wednesday, partly cloudy, never did partly cloudy sound so good. Isolated showers naturally, southeast winds 10 to 15 miles an hour, high 89, low 78. A small craft advisory now in effect, seas 10 feet, but decreasing. Sunrise 610, low tide 855, a high tide 419, sunset at 552. All right, thank you Bob for that weather report. Now we'll say once again, we are very lucky. Yeah, we've been, we've been unlucky and we've been lucky. Yeah. And we were lucky, this no doubt about it. For sure. That thing was coming straight. The, the first forecast had it going right over uh, Saipan. Yep. And then each forecast, it got a little bit farther north until it passed just north of Anatahan. Yep, that's what kept going. There. So I will say yeah. Uh, so you're, you're lucky, we're track. lucky, everybody's lucky. We're all yeah. lucky. <laughs> and so if we're that lucky, why don't we wrap this show up? Yeah, it must be our lucky it day. It must be our lucky day. We'll see you guys tomorrow night at 6. Good night.